3 December as a National Agriculture Education Day and every year we are organizing with a full of zeal and full of strength and even ICI institutes are organizing 3rd December as a National Agriculture Education Day and uh, one more thing is that the uh, government of India is insisting that every state university they are supposed to have a, a revenue generation, a good uh, roadway we have prepared that how they can integrate capacity building, training, consultancy, certification, technology, outreach and uh, other, other thing uh, for getting a revenue. Then we have also introduced the green initiatives and for that many universities got a uh, fund in, 17, in 16 and 17 and this year again because this year our uh, EFC is not cleared so far uh, through the highest authority and our CC is not is pending that's why we have not given any fund for a, a, a for capital investment but we have given a lot of fund under revenue and uh, the same thing is that in from next year again we will start green initiatives where there is a good opportunity every university can have a rainwater harvesting mechanism system in their university in place solar energy utilization even composting wastewater recycling e-governance and uh, noise free generator they can go for this type of a mechanism all green initiatives next one this we have already covered 135 crore to Atalangana, 135 crore to our uh, Andhra nest. This we have covered emeritus scientist and emeritus professor. Next one. Next one. Ranking. Last year we made this exercise and our EQR section, they have done a good job. There was some, because at initial inception when we have introduced, uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, means a theories people were not accustomed with our set of questionnaire. So we now this again this year we have again revised this complete uh, 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 questionnaire and we are going to launch uh, within a 10 days or 15 days. And on our foundation day of ICR on 16th of July, we will make a ranking again for all agriculture industry for this year. And these are the few initiatives. Uh, Dr. Chetty has done a good work for postdoctoral fellowship. And uh, at, the two, at the initial inception, we have identified IERI, IVRI, and all deep university to work on this issue. And once it will be successful, then we will, we will implement in our other state agriculture university postdoctoral fellowship. Then we, ECTA, we have already covered a new course line that is a pro cool promoting uh, cooperative learning. 3A integration, anytime, any, anywhere and anyone, means anyone can study at any time and anywhere if it is interested. So that type of pro pool we have, make, uh, we have introduced and I am happy to say that one of the such pro pool set, set up has been established by Dr. Nanda is sitting here, their university has done with a dairy technology component and where it is available on the um, your mobile and, and you can get all information that what is the course labels of first year, second year, third year that, and we are also trying, our NARM is doing a good job for this uh, activity. Next. New initiatives that a regulatory mechanism for agriculture education because it is a one of the problem. Uh, one major problem is that a, uh, we don't have a statutory power like your MCI, ACT and VCI. So we have developed a complete draft, we have submitted to competent authority, let us see in case we will get an opportunity then we will be having some mechanism to control or rather I don't want to use the word of control to streamline and to improve the quality of agriculture education in private sector as well, that is the basic our requirement. Next one. Uh, this is a basically one of more important component and this is a NAHEP. And with the help of World Bank, uh, this is a World Bank funded project, 1100 crore rupees we got and we, it has been approved by the government of India and World Bank on 50-50 course sharing basis and under this, this is for 3 years and we are responsible to create a right type of awareness, we say right type of visibility and basically we are also interested to attract the talented students. Even a good provision we kept for increasing the competency of faculty member. 250 crore rupees we kept if, uh, exclusively for training of a, our faculty member to, to the abroad uh, agencies uh, so that they will get a present state of art of technology which is available globally. That is the basic idea. Next one. Under this, uh, we have got a three uh, uh, component. Next. Uh, very important component is the institutional development plan where we are focusing only for undergraduate students and our basic idea is that a, let us explore the possibility to or extend a basic research for knowledge generation and 
let us make our undergraduate student as a job provider rather than job seeker. So we have tried to articulate a right sense of a entrepreneurship in education. So that type of mechanism we have done and at present total uh, 8 universities we have selected. Uh, this, this was on a competitive basis. And there was a, a team, a team of, uh, which was headed by our Honorable Director General and uh, there were, we were having a, a experts from the foreign university and even experts from the, our national, um, uh, our country and collectively they have done a good exercise. So a total 8 uh, so far uh, IDP proposal we have selected and this is basically as I mentioned that uh, exclusively for undergraduate student. Next one. Uh, second is a second component is a cast. This is Center for Advanced Agriculture through Science and Technology, and it is for postgraduate education. And there is a, a provision of a applied research as well. We say anybody who is having a good expertise and good infrastructure, and we have suggested some of the themes. And these themes may be of a it may be of a secondary agriculture, conservation agriculture, precision agriculture. Many good uh, uh, university came forward this proposal. We received more than 51 proposals and at present we have selected 8 sub university and, uh, and uh, we have already released their uh, uh, administrative approval and very soon we will be dispersing the amount. So this is cast for postgraduate education to train our postgraduate students so they, so they will become a good leader in management of the whole agriculture in a specified and front area of agriculture. Next one. Cast, uh, as I discussed, there are a lot of uh, theme area we have suggested. Next. Then the th third component is, is it is there with the, our ICR only and we, we would like to make ICR as a leader in the agriculture education. For that, we will be having some site-specific proposal. Even we, under this project, we have included an innovation grant. We have included some of the project uh, related to non accredited industry. And we have given 5 crore rupees uh, to non accredited university with the assumption that at least they should come up with a, some space, space uh, where they can get an accreditation. So that was a basic idea under this component. Next one. This was a second component as I mentioned ICR should become a leader on the top level. Even government of India is insisting that they, when we have got a, so much of a good infrastructure, good facility for education, why not we are excelling at the international level. So that's why yes, some component we have kept and for that uh, next year, once we will cover the provision of IDP, cast and innovation grant, after that we will concentrate on this second component. Next one. Third is uh, of course project management and learning. At the end of the whole day, we will draw some strategies that what will be our uh, way forward in next year. So next one. These are the some way forward where I would like to ask to all of you all intellectual group of an highest authority of education is sitting in this hall. I want that the candidate deliberate on some of the issues, how to mitigate the faculty shortage. There is a need to have inspired teacher networking. There is a need to reduce the inbreeding. How you can do this some exercise. Let us make a right emphasis on research and it should be of a social relevant. It is not that a, we are doing a some exercise as for our own this. How to in, promote innovation. Recently there was a list of innovating uh, countries were published. I am sorry to say our country is standing at the position of 124, 124 out of 155 list and agriculture education innovation is further lower. So that's why there is a need to uh, uh, promote the innovation international ranking. Let us forget about national ranking, it is high time we should have uh, some international ranking for that many good universities, IERI, IBRI, at least I can say that the university can excel in this field. How they will move, that is a big question mark. Industries, academy, interface, global collaboration is one of the important things. Involvement of alumni, technology, enabled learning and societal, scientific social responsibility is also one of the important things. How we can have some uh, new way forward that we, we, we will definitely discuss. And my last slide is next. Next, uh, definitely uh, sky is the limit. We want that a, at least we should create a right model to play ourselves in digital India, skill India, make in India 
even hackathon 2018, which will be dedicated. Our Honorable Prime Minister said that it is a high time we should have a hackathon 2018 exclusively for agriculture. We made a preliminary exercise in Mona, Maholi. We made a first uh, our get together where more than 5,000 students from an engineering college they visited. We have floated a lot of problems digitally and they have given a very good solution digitally. And I am sure this program will be a successful in, at the end of this uh, year. Thank you very much. This was a something related to our agriculture education in India. I have tried to give a all information, but since time was short, I have taken 35 minutes in place of 30 minutes, 5 minutes extra. I am really thankful to all of you. Thank you. Always it is uh, it gives a different type of strength to face uh, some something new. Yes, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, as uh, we are seeing the situation at present, we don't have the grassroots level uh, uh, persons to work at the village level. Very soon, I, I, I got your point. Yeah. Very soon, Dr. Venkat is there. He has prepared a very good uh, plan. In short, I am saying it is too early to declare. That's why I am not in position to give this uh, different component. But, uh, but uh, uh, immediately after BSc, any student will come. This is a type of a abhyas. It is agri-business services and empowering youth in agriculture. That is a basic idea. And here a one complete year of course we are producing and we will produce a semi-skilled labor. I am using the word of labor. Why labor? Because we want a person should work in the field. That is there. So we will take care. But here I would like to mention higher education is in under domain of a dare. As far as the lower education is concerned, in last plan we did our exercise, we have prepared a complete uh, syllabus, what should be uh, uh, covered at uh, 9, 10th, 11th and 12th uh, standard and we have given this to MHRD and uh, to our UGC as well and in terms of, because they are also having a lot of courses in, and they are trying to accommodate our agriculture education as well at the primary school, uh, uh, higher education, not higher education at the school level. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have some questions and some suggestions. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are all the universities, uh, agriculture universities and uh, the institutes in the country connected? Yes. Yeah. With the help of ENTA, it is connected. We say all, uh, see what we did last in last accreditation board, we have allowed the entry of a private universities as well now private university and college after first batch will out then they can apply for accreditation and once they will be accredited they will get an opportunity to come with our network so, uh, the, uh, the, the connectivity means uh, you will be so what kind of platform which you are using for that that is the online that is online it is there so you can give lecture from one university and all the universities? No, that lecture provision is we are maintaining but I, I was, uh, I, 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 have, I have informed that a, as far as the management of different universities is concerned, online we are connected. But as far as the course delivery is concerned, we, have, we are also connected with the NAM and NAM has initiated some activity. And uh, because what is happening in our course labors, even in the after 15th recommendation, we, we have given a provision that they can change 30 percent of courses. Because what is happening, our country has got a, we say we have got a 29 states, 7 Indian territory, more than 6 lakhs uh, villages there, every village has got its own identity. So that's why 30 percent course labors can be changed. So basically this idea which has been already introduced in the engineering uh, education under we will try to include it in another MOOC and other things. Yeah. If you see, we are, I mentioned in a new platform which we are going to launch, that is a MOOC. Yeah. So, this will be available. So, I was saying, Mr. Sorry, I'll take one more minute. Yes, sir, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Just to supplement the answer. Ah, yes, sir. The ICRS started this CARP, 40 CARP, Center ah. for Advanced Scientific Training, where all the participants from various universities can also go to the Correct. CARP is a center for advanced faculty. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. sorry, I. Yeah. 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 I I'll take one more. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. what yeah. I was uh, saying is, say, suppose a Nobel laureate come to uh, Mumbai. 
but he cannot go to all the centers. So if we can have a live uh, that is good suggestion. That is what I was. Uh, yeah, that is good suggestion. We will definitely try to include it. And then this MOOC uh, massive uh, yeah. online uh, open education is and uh, creating open education resources is a good idea. Yes. Sir. Um, uh, then uh, one suggestion, uh, two three suggestions. One is in Europe nowadays. Uh, they are talking and funding for responsible research and innovation. Yes. yes. And this is a very good uh, document and very good scheme. They are spending three billion dollar on this. RRI. RRI. So uh, if we can have those kind of uh, things uh, in our country, I think it would be uh, useful. One thing which we uh, did in the state of Maharashtra for traditional university and even the agriculture universities are participating in that we have created a research festival for students so every university conducts the research competitions and those projects are displayed in this festival once in a year so every university conducts that so if you are conducting those kind of things nothing like it but if not then we can have this kind of uh, Yes. Uh, research festivals in our yeah. country. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I would like to supplement here. As I mentioned, Hackathon. Hackathon 2018. It is oh. a issue by Shastra of this our, uh, state agriculture university to concentrate on this job and we will provide some facility. First of all, individual university will do this exercise at their level. Right. They will digitally invite at least, means a solution for a different problem of their area. And finally, all selected people from all 75 universities, we will call at the national level and we will definitely award them. That type of mechanism we have already started. Oh, great. Yes. The last, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, suppose a student of agriculture wants to do a course in artificial intelligence or machine learning yes. in the same campus or even in collaboration with other campus. Do we allow that kind of yeah, creation? Sure, sure, sure. We have into, I, I, in, in the last month only we have launched a one uh, IDP, Institutional Development Plan. This was exclusively duty for artificial intelligence, robotics and drone. Dr. Chahal, uh, he has shared the, uh, the session and he has given a complete uh, roadmap that how we can articulate. So in a Junagad Agriculture University we have introduced it and it is open. Any university who is interested uh, to do some extra work, especially for artificial intelligence because in future, in future of our whole agriculture will depends upon that how virtually we will design the switch solution. So artificial intelligence it is not real, it is a type of virtual. So it is, this is, uh, this provision exists here. So cross credits we are allowing. Yeah, up to 30 percent you can have. What I said that if you feel that a, in your locality, artificial intelligence, even mechatronics you can go through, even wireless sensing you can go through, image processing you can have, a, or you can have a secondary agriculture, you can have conservation agriculture, you can have specialty agriculture, you can have high tech cultivation. So there are a lot of uh, new frontier area of agriculture is available. It is up to you in case if you have got expertise and good infrastructure you can go ahead. But not more than 30 percent of the total syllabus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You are always supporting to us, and we are very happy to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank Inbreeding is a major problem yes, yes. and ICR and Education Division has done a lot, but a lot also need to be done. Yes, I had one small suggestion that 15% of the students in PG courses you are giving a scholarship, Education Division. Is it possible? Can we double that? And students are moved from one state to other state, you know, with that scholarship. Because, uh, no, I understand the states have been resisting this move. But as long as we say the state that your quota will remain there, remain, will be there, and it will not be sacrificed, number will not be sacrificed, but those whom you admit, 15 more, 30 percent of them will be moved out. So that will be a great contribution that they will be able to come to know other part of the country. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. This is really good idea. But basically, we are also able. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, at present, we are giving 400. At present, we are giving 475 JRS. The committee under the chairmanship of uh, Dr. Punjab Singh has doubled it to 1,000, and we are giving 202 SRS, and this is doubled to 500. We have not implemented. It is already embedded in the EFC. Once if the EFC gets approved, certainly the number of JRS and SRF are going to be doubled, and we have made a special budget provision for that. And in fact, uh, for the capacity building, uh, through education division, we are spending 125 crores every year. Uh, my father mentioned the education division. Now, safety shortage. Faculty shortage is a major chronic problem with almost all the agricultural universities. Uh, we have suggested in the past some time that NAS fellows are you know, scattered throughout country. So is it possible that can their services be utilized till we find uh, the solution for this problem? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah please. Uh, sir, I have an answer to your question also. In order to mitigate the faculty shortage in SAUs, the scheme of emeritus professors was introduced only with that in mind. At any given time, we have 100 sorts of emeritus professors. And all 100 uh, slots will not be filled at once because people retire every year. We have new income opportunity for the people retiring every year. So we have decided to fill up about 30 to 35 slots every year so that by three years all 100 people will be there. And again every year 35 people will be retiring, completing their tenure. And that is one way of mitigating the shortage of faculty in the uh, universities. But this suggestion was made by Dr. Punjab Singh again, who is president of NAS now, that uh, we have the talents uh, in, uh, you know, NAS fellows are there, scattered in different parts of the country, and we had a discussion on that. But the thing is, the modalities have to be worked out. Then we suggested to NAS that is NAS in a position to fund, suppose if we hire some people, if universities are in need of it, we can supply the list of uh, experts in different disciplines to different universities, so that it is left to the universities to invite these NAS fellows who are expert, who have expertise in their own disciplines, to invite them for the adjunct professors or teaching a specialized course. In fact, we have given that liberty to these emeritus professors and we have given 1 lakh rupees per year contingency for these emeritus professors to go to universities and stay there and we are also writing to the universities to take care of their local needs so that the only travel cost is met by these emeritus professors. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Chetri. Yeah. Actually, my suggestion was that about is too short and yeah, Yes, yes. I was uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, uh, emeritus scientists or professors are too short a number, seeing 75 culture university, 100 plus uh, ICR institutes. Sir, but uh, so, I, I tell you, so uh, this year, uh, for a greatest professor, we got uh, 61 affiliations. 72. 72 affiliations. Even it was less than that of our total. Yeah. And out of 72, I am sorry to say, with our full effort, we were quite open and we were quite supportive. We could not uh, uh, select more than that of a 30. 30. 30. 30. <laughs> we could select so basically, there is a, a set criteria. I don't want to compromise with the quality. It, I don't want to manage any show. Anybody who is early, he can get an opportunity. That is basic. Then my suggestion was totally different. That you are already giving money to the agricultural universities for conducting various tra training on sorry, classes and all that. So those NAS fellows can, can be invited from yeah, that is, we are, Sir, we are thinking on that so Only and yes. willingness, if yes. you can, uh, if you can encourage the universities to look for NAS fellows who are willing to guide the or come and deliver lectures for 10 days, 15 days, that will help a lot. Sir, yeah, that, that is they, they, they are in pipeline and we will uh, launch it. And Sir, we have already uh, informed the NAS to supply the list of experts. Who is so expert in which subject? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, let them head. Colleges in the rural areas, they should know. That such scholarships are available. I was not doing uh, with the ICR giving its scholarships. See, that is basically what is happening. It is online, everything is available. One should keep what is there in ICR. Sir, basically what is happening? One more thing I would like to mention. 
it is the only agriculture education which gives scholarship starting from the initial inception a student getting admission in bsc during msc phd even we are supportive uh, during their career as a summer school winter school cap national fellow national professor even after retirement means uh, this is a basically you would you should appreciate till that fellow will say no we are there to support them thank you yes sir ah uh, you know one question sir madam madam one question hello ji sir one last i am sir kumo yeah uh, this is uh, my involvement my compliment for uh, your excellent presentation thank, thank you sir sir is that for mitigation of the energy shortage as dr chetty also mentioned my request to you that this is a good thing that you are taking help of the scientist emeritus to fill the uh, yep. uh, gap now my suggestion to you that if possible kindly make a provision when you uh, issue an offer to them for scientist emeritus it should be clearly mentioned that you will uh, contribute at least teaching for this much hours then it will uh, serve the purpose otherwise they are not the actual replacement of the faculty they are not going to because they say no we we don't have get this position to uh, teach any course sir so that is why sir, sir, sir with with folded hand you are seated to me you are the instrumental behind a lot of new reforms in icr <laughs> sir we are giving we are selecting and we are giving it uh, in the hand of honorable vices now it is you how you are making use in case if you fail i am sorry we can't do this type of intervention at the level we do not we are not interested in making any any intervention in your governance we you are free when we have declared that emeritus scientist emeritus professor you just come come up with it and you just take their services even you won't believe recently director ipr he came with this proposal he said sir these emeritus scientists has contributed a very good and now we are interested to extend their services further and we have given one more year so that time for it thank you very much sir last question sir last question sir this is regarding involvement of the alumni and industry academy interaction unlike uh, i am alumni and iit alumni agriculture alumni uh, don't have money bags they have uh, uh, ventured into various professions and uh, multiple disciplinary action is knowledge can be brought to the field of agriculture now probably you can you also mentioned there is shortage of uh, uh, faculty that's why can we think of involving agriculture professionals those who went to the icr and agriculture university systems to come back and teach yeah so because there is in my own batch we have two ias yes, three ias yes sir we yeah. have made adjunct professor you yes. can call them as a visiting professor industry expert you can get we can we are giving this one under is to is individual d i am sorry to use that and many many people are not using for the purpose for it for it is a design people are misusing our fund i have seen otherwise this year what we did we made it exclusively that they, this grant for this thing this grant for this There is a good problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would suggest that we close here, and the uh, sir will be available uh, during lunch to come to him. So we we close it. Let us break for lunch. Otherwise, uh, if you start the session, then we will be halfway through, and it doesn't look nice. The chairman uh, of the next uh, technical session once suggested that uh, let us have the lunch break. Maybe we can cut short the lunch break. We had given earlier one hour lunch break. We'll make it half an hour, 30 minutes, and we reassemble, reassemble at 1:45 here. We will start. Followed by an interesting uh, panel discussion. Now we are starting with the first technical session of our conclave, and the topic for this session is status and scope of human capital requirement in agriculture and allied sectors. For this session, uh, for this session, the convener we have is Dr. M. B. Chetty, Chair Dr. S. S. Chahal, and Co-Chair Dr. A. S. Ananda. <coughs> Repertorials we have Dr. S. S. Kanwar and Dr. P. C. Reddy. I request all the prana. I request all the dignitaries to kindly take their seats. and dr mb chetty 
डॉक्टर एस एस चहल डॉक्टर ए एस नांदा एंड डॉक्टर एस एस कालपर डॉक्टर पी सी रेड्डी
of which six of national importance and involved in high-level policy planning committees of UGC, MHRD and ICR. And he has been really the source of inspiration for the Agricultural Education Division. He is on several committees of the Agricultural Education Division and our DDG uh, has already mentioned about his contributions, his suggestions for the improvement of quality of agricultural education in this country. And uh, I came in very close contact with him when he was uh, the chairman of extramural research projects. For the first time in the history of Indian Council of Agriculture Research, we had these extramural projects from the Agricultural Education Division. It is very common to have these extramural projects from crop science division, animal science, fisheries and other things, but never in the history we had this kind of a project from the extramural uh, funding uh, from by the Education Division. And he gave a lot of ideas and also gave us guidance how to uh, you know, propose the projects from the Agricultural Education Division. In the first instance, we awarded 63 projects in 2015, 16 and 16, 17, worth 8 crores. Again, this was continued in the last year also. The amount given to us was very less. It was just 1 crore and we gave about 21 projects. And this is one of the most important programs of the Agricultural Education Division. And we are really very happy, sir, you have given a lot of importance to our request all the time. We keep looking at you for your suggestions, for your advice and for your blessings. And I am really happy that he has also agreed to chair this important session in this National Agriculture Conclave. And similarly, uh, our chairman, uh, co-chairman, Dr. A.S. Nanda, who is currently the Vice-Chancellor of Guru Angad Dev, Veterinary University, Ludhiana, an expert in animal reproduction, animal husbandry. Uh, he was, uh, before becoming the Vice Chancellor, he was uh, the Commissioner of Animal Husbandry in Government of India and FAO expert for Asia and uh, animal production and, uh, and uh, at Vienna, Austria. Austria. Research extensively on problems of animal fertility and uh, <clears throat> several areas of specific situation to uh, improve the productivity and uh, production of buffaloes and dairy cow. He has been associated with uh, the education reforms through several uh, organizations like uh, the executive member of the Veterinary Council of India, a professor at Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana, and a visiting professor at Hiroshima University, Japan. Again, I would like to make uh, a mention about uh, Professor Nanda. I came in contact uh, with him when I visited Gadwasu as a member of uh, the monitoring and uh, review team of the ICR development grants. It was such a wonderful experience of uh, interacting with you for two days, sir, when I was in Ludhiana and it was like uh, just home. We never felt that we were away from Delhi or away from home. The kind hospitality which you bestowed on all the, the members of the team and the way you cooperated in taking us to every nook and corner of the university and showing all the facilities which were created by ICR funding with the proper recognition and proper acknowledgement to ICR that was really wonderful and the people and the team chairman and other members had a very high appreciation for Gadwasu for its efforts in the animal reproduction and animal physiology and maintaining the animal health in the country which is the most important as of now. With these few words about uh, the chairman and uh, co-chairman, uh, I request uh, the chairman to uh, you know, conduct uh, the session and uh, I request both, both chairman and co-chairman to see that uh, we don't uh, extend beyond the schedule. And one more request to all the distinguished uh, delegates here is uh, we will uh, we'll not go for the discussion after the presentation and you can, if you want to have the discussion, you can have during the tape deck. Otherwise, we will not be able to complete three sessions. We are just beginning with the first session. This is my sincere request to all the members uh, and all the delegates attending this conference. Uh, with this few words, I request again the Chairman, Professor Chair, to conduct the uh, proceedings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shetty. My co-chairman, Professor Yes Nanda. Honorable DDG, Dr. Nestor Thor, my ADG, Dr. Shetty, my leads, Portuguese on the dice, many 
Honorable ex Vice Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, staff of this university, and students. Now, dear friends, after the first lecture which has been uh, delivered today, before this, I think uh, Honorable DDG has uh, made the task more easy and difficult also. Easy in the sense that uh, everything has been covered, he has touched all the points, he has given all the initiatives watched by Indian Council of Agriculture Research, it has been taken at what are the need of this system to push up the agriculture education and agriculture in the country. Difficult, difficult in the sense, and I think there is nothing left, but the other, the other speaker has to contribute, but of course their points uh, they will be mentioned and this will be deliberated uh, at the end of this session. Dear friends, we all know this agriculture system now, it is a very robust system. We have uh, traveled the long journey when we look, at, look back to our independence, only few colleges were there after other traditional report which was given. It was the landmark then when the first in 1959, the IER, it was given the status of uh, deemed to be university, that was the first step towards agriculture, university higher education which was in the country. Afterwards, uh, now if you look into it, at the rate of one university per year that has been uh, uh, added to uh, this uh, system and now we are uh, having a large number of university colleges and uh, large system of this NRES. And all these revolutions which we made, green revolution, rural revolution, these are not taught in the school education. Of course, great contribution of this uh, robust system, but we look into this. But at the same time, but we see that there are, of course, we can't uh, say that perfection can be achieved. We have to perfect and we have to uh, look at that what we have to. So this session, which is particularly now uh, devoted to status and scope of human capital requirement in agriculture and allied sector, which we will <coughs> focus on. And we all know that in this, uh, in this system, presently we are admitting about 39,000 students every year in this, uh, this system, and about uh, 28 or uh, 30 uh, the, the thousand students, that is the outcome, outcome, but norm. Uh, it has conducted one uh, survey uh, with the Institute of Applied Manpower Planning in 2010, which reveals that uh, in by 2020, the need of agricultural graduates that will be 54,000. So still, we have to expand this uh, system. With this uh, sort of uh, uh, report, as you know, we all know that uh, the National Education Commission, the chair by none else by Dr. Patrota, also gave that uh, there is only 8% GER in the country. It has to be increased to 12%, but now it is 25%. It has increased manifold. But when we look into this three E's which we are emphasizing, that is expansion, excellence, and equity, we are focusing more on expansion. But so far as excellence and equity is concerned, we are much lagging behind this. These two is that it has, we have to look into it. Now, education, it has more become quantitative and less qualitative. We all, we are on, on this lot of, you have, you have seen this, I think, in the last three years, what the education division has done, it's a revolutionary type of initiative which has, which has come into light in all the university. This is now acclaimed in, when we travel from university to university. But of course, task is difficult, challenging, and it has to be accomplished. Whatever uh, Dr. Thorsam has given these uh, uh, sort of points, it is not very easy to achieve. Lot of efforts are needed both ways, right from uh, bottom uh, uh, onwards. Uh, we have to take students, farmers, every, everybody uh, along with. So we have to focus more that uh, the graduate which are coming up, they should be more employable, and accreditation, of course, he has mentioned already that it's now extended to even private institutions and uh, there are funds also for those which are institutions which, which are even non-credited so that they should also come up. But there are a lot of opportunities and scope for uh, this agricultural graduate which on which we have focused this attention in this uh, uh, session. Uh, but at the same time, 
we are, apart from these uh, other opportunities, we have to focus more on entrepreneurship because this agriculture is more practical, where more uh, small scale industries are needed, that is more uh, uh, to be uh, put on this. That is what we see on farm and right from farm to plate, that is food processing and uh, that there we have to involve farmers in small processing units and students also should be competent for this. So agriculture, what we see, that is all we are in one, that agriculture is not priority for students. It has been emphasized in the lecture also that we have to create, we have to uh, attract talented students into this uh, stream. But when we look into ground level reality, agriculture definitely is not a priority education for students. How do we make it? That is our goal that we have to see it. Reasons of course, there are many. And uh, we see that there are certain universities that are performing suboptimal. They have to come up, they have to be more proactive and more uh, competitive in this respect. Now, having to look into this outer, well, what we see into this, about 30,000 uh, students they appear in net examination and only one fifth of this they clear, uh, they clear this examination. This uh, speaks a lot of this, the quality education, and we have to increase the quality education at least 50% should be passed per percent ratio of these students. So this experiential skill, uh, it has been already emphasized in the morning, but uh, this very important issue that has been raised in the morning, that is, that Indian Council of Research, Agriculture Research and Center put in a lot of efforts. But agriculture, education and education is a state subject. That is the major sort of uh, impediment which is coming up and all the states, we are having not a diverse type of agriculture, agriculture education and all states they are having different priority and they are, uh, they are working in different diverse ways. So to bring them that uh, in one, one platform for progressive that is very very important that is uh, uh, me. Uh, we have one committee, we are functioning into it. And we have all the, also added one of the agenda in that, that what is the funding, what is the uh, funding of center towards states and what is the state contribution towards this for the last 10 years, 15 years and it is a lot of uh, imbalances there. The ICR is of course, I always say that if a development grant by the ICR, if it, that is top, all the practical and the reasons and the sort of uh, uh, when any activity, in teaching activity in the university, those will be. Uh, sort of, uh, I can say stop because state, states they are funding only salary com salary component to the university, not any research, not any teaching grant that is by the state university. That is a one point, and for that reason we are working. I have discussed with the Dr. Venkateshwar in, in the morning, morning also. That next meeting, let us call these uh, secretary and chief secretary of the state government into that, so that they should be also sensitized about the situation about because of which we cannot uh, uh, cope up, we cannot uh, uh, go further. So there is a lot of uh, disconnect among agriculture, education, employment, industry. That gap has to be filled up uh, in a way. And we must be accepted. Everything is now in the curriculum. Fourth team committee, fifth team committee, BSMA, all these efforts, a lot of efforts are being put up by the Indian Council of Agriculture. But when the delivery system comes in the agricultural education, we are failing there. So that delivery system in the education, that is mechanism that has to be improved. Why only one or two smart classrooms? All classrooms should be smart classrooms. Teachers should be well competent to teach there. Delivery mechanism has to be in place. In about inbreeding, this has been discussed in the morning also. A uh, lot of efforts, a uh, lot of incentive, these are being given. But inbreeding in the university is in the faculty and in the students is at a very high level. But what we have to do? Small examples we have to take. I can take examples of Punjab Agriculture University and Rana Agriculture University. The credit sharing, transfer sharing, we are still, uh, talking too much. But how much it is in practice? PAU and HAU will help a procedure that a postgraduate has to take one course in HAU and HAU they have to take, to take one course in PAU. So such type of agreement such had to be done and made in place. That is very much important. Governing system has to be increased, accountability, uh, all these uh, things are important. Of course, the agriculture, it needs to be priority number one in policy 
of center and state government which is very much uh, important and this is timely uh, it should be taken up so these are the points many points were there but i was i went on cutting when dr rathor he was speaking that it's all covered but it's suppose uh, good that uh, all the points are being uh, covered here uh, this uh, creating center of excellence it will reduce there now this uh, faculty now this is again it not in the hand of indian council of agriculture research my point was raised by uh, uh, here in the morning during discussion i didn't uh, respond at that way but uh, now see if we put on going this thing faculty again it is the hand of, of the state governments they are not sanctioning new post rather there it is being emphasized that whenever a post is uh, becoming vacant don't fill up so this is faculty is being reduced we now if we say that these adjunct professors professors uh, these emeritus they are at the stage of beyond 60 65 we have seen they are that not ready to move from one place to another place even for 6 months even for one year see the practical different difficulties you have to look into it why we are saying that uh, it can happen this is not possible even professor who attained at the professor of 50 age or 55 is he or she is not ready to move from one uh, his university to another university lot of things pension so he will not get it gratuity so there are lot of things we have to see this thing in totality so we have to shift our attention to icd why not video conferencing lectures from university to university only one person he is competent in that say the molecular biology which is coming up in subject it will can deliver its subject in this video conference and it can be attended in all the universities in this way. so that that way we have to add these component component in this also gender sen gender sensitivity in education is must we should be proactive to it because more than 50% girls they are now entering in agriculture education and we must not see i have worked in rajasthan in madhya pradesh also we have seen it in the field also ladies are working uh, more than the uh, men so we should be gender gender sensitive also uh, in this need or need of the industry we are very we should thank the icr for and uh, particularly pdg for this student ready program it encloses many good thing it is composite of many uh, sort of uh, programs uh, when it is implemented a uh, good a uh, lot of good results are expected from it and uh, of course uh, when we look into this certain uh, national agriculture and clear this is of course first of its nature we hope that it will uh, Uh, continue and this is the first and then it will be improving our emphasis previously that was on more on grow more food but now this emphasis that has to be changed because food is grown <coughs> farmer they have grown the food food is now uh, it has also been mentioned it's 260 uh, 3 million ton or 300 million ton horticulture and milk production it is enough now the point is that with grow more food is there but profit of margin of farmer that has been reduced how that is to be increased that should be our that is focus has been changed our under prime minister has changed the focus to not to this that the farmer income that has to be increased that is a major focus that is very important and how this can be done that is first low cost technology research that should focus on this and then of course uh, Uh, compensation for compensation for dis distress to farmer is very 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 short term solution lot of states they are compensating it but it's not long term solution low cost technology is very important we were discussing this uh, honorable dg has mentioned in the morning that this uh, artificial intelligence project there also we mentioned also that today the all agriculture that is tractor oriented high machinery that is high cost is there but low cost machinery a uh, two farmer that is very important for cn farming that we have to adopt it and it into it diversified agriculture that is very very important farmers competency in involvement in uh, uh, from right from uh, farmer to update uh, that is very important food processing units and focus on in processing and food grain horticulture produce so these are some of the uh, thoughts which i wanted to share it with you to set this uh, tone for this uh, uh, this uh, session uh, very two uh, competent and very uh, sort of uh, learned speakers they are uh, there in this uh, session uh, and now directly i shall request the first speaker uh, 
that is uh, Dr. P. Venkatesh Varulu, he is Vice Chancellor of uh, ER and I am TAU Barbani. He will speak us uh, on policy innovation and institutional reforms in building uh, vibrant human resources capital. I just would like to introduce uh, Dr. Rafiq Teshalu to all of you. He is currently the Vice Chancellor of uh, VNMKV Parbani and he was earlier the Director of CREDA Hyderabad. He has done PhD in soil microbiology, served in ICR for more than 30 years and provided national leadership for dryland agriculture and climate change research and uh, I remember when uh, I was in the university and he was in the ICR. Now he is in the university, I am in the ICR. That is a different issue. I, I had an occasion to listen to him about the contingency plans for drought mitigation because that was uh, uh, the theme of all the governments that they prepared the contingency plan, district-wise contingency plans for the entire country. And he was mainly the person responsible for preparing the contingency plans. And I also listened to his lecture about the hail stop damage to the crops. In, in uh, one of the Vice Chancellor's conference, he gave a beautiful lecture on hail storm protection, how to protect the crops from the hail storm. That was also a very well uh, prepared lecture. And he has to his credit more than 250 research papers and two patents and is the recipient of several awards. And the most prestigious awards are Vasant Naik Award of ICR, Hari Om Ashram Award of ICR, Fakruddin Ali Ahmad Award of ICR and FAI Golden Jubilee Award and he has guided 10 PhD students and 12 MS students and he has visited a number of countries and he was also a FAO consultant in China and Netherlands. Most importantly is the fellow of the National Academy of Agricultural Sciences which is most prestigious one and always you can see him smiling and full of enthusiasm and problem solving nature. With this brief introduction, uh, I request uh, Dr. Venkatesh Shadu. And one more uniqueness of this uh, session, I would like to bring it to your notice. Probably you might have observed the both chairman and co-chairman are from Punjab. Both the speakers are from Telugu. Maybe I don't know because I cannot even differentiate uh, Anguru and Telangana whether they do. But Telugu speaking, both are Telugu speaking. And uh, myself and one reporter are Kannada speaking. <laughs> and only odd man out is from Palampur. <laughs> so I am sorry I cannot help you convert sir. You are the only odd man out from um, in the session. With this uh, we will start the session. Thank you very much. Both speakers have same name. Uh, uh, this, is, yes, this is best example of national integrity. Uh, th uh, thank you Dr. Shetty for this uh, uh, introduction and uh, uh, thank you all and uh, especially the organizers for having invited. And uh, uh, sorry that I didn't have any slides because yesterday I was in Delhi and uh, the organizers told me that you tomorrow have to make a presentation. I just came. Uh, but I would like to share a few points based on my long experience uh, in the, on the subject of uh, vibrant uh, manpower and the, how we should really address the issue of policy and institutional change, both from the experience of ICR and also the executive universities and also some of my visits to other countries how they are actually doing there and uh, what are the lessons for us in this country. Uh, the first thing is that uh, what is the importance of human capital? As you know that uh, for any progress, you know, there are basically four capitals required. The physical capital, the financial capital, the human capital and the social capital. And uh, of all these, the most important is the human capital. Uh, many of you know that uh, the success of any organization depends on the leadership, not so much about the buildings and the money you put in. You sometimes you see small startup putting very small amount of money, but in five years they become huge organization, but some other very elephant like thing, but they don't make much progress. That's because of the leadership, the innovativeness of the leader. I was attending one program in IIM Ahmedabad some two years ago and there one professor was telling me that they made some survey all over India from all the corporates and all and they just sent a questionnaire. In the last 50 years, who are the three public figures, public figures doesn't mean politicians, but 
who are scientists or technocrats who made maximum lasting impact on the society, Indian society. And it came out from the polling. Swaminathan, obviously, because we all love him and he is our... Second is Kuriya. And third is Sridhar, the metro man. I mean, uh, we, I mean the, the point is, uh, impact everybody makes. Even Shesan made big impact when he was election commissioner. Kiran made a lot of impact.